Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about test construction. Test construction or test development refers to the science and art of planning, preparing, administering, scoring, statistically analyzing and reporting results of tests. Test construction involves a number of steps which include specifying the construct of interest, deciding test's function that is diagnosis, description of skill level and prediction of recovery, choosing a method that is performance, behavioral observation and self-report, designing item content, evaluating reliability and validity of test and modifying the test to maximize its utility. There are three commonly used test construction strategies. They are inductive, deductive and empirical. Scales that are created today will mostly have all the three elements. Inductive, also known as itemetric or internal consistency methods, uses statistical methods such as exploratory factor analysis or principal component analysis. The five-factor model of personality was developed using this method. Deductive method, also known as rational or intuitive, begins by developing a theory for the construct of interest. Empirical, also known as external or criterion group method, attempts to create a measure that differentiates between different established groups. The Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory was initially developed using this method. The two important aspects of test construction are item writing and item analysis. Item writing An item can be defined as a simple question or task that is not usually broken down into smaller units. Item writing involves a number of steps. The first is to define clearly what you want to measure. It will mostly be a type of cognitive achievement that is it can be either a skill or knowledge or a type of affective trait. The items should be made as specific as possible. The next is generate an item poll. In order to get the required number of items, one may need to write 3 to 4 items for each item that they wish to write. For example, if you wish to write 20 items for your test, you may generate a poll of 60 to 80 items. The next is to avoid exceptionally long items as they may lead to having items that are misleading or confusing. The next is to be mindful of the level of reading difficulty of the targeted test takers. For example, if the item developer is writing for nursery school children, the item should be in line with the capability of the targeted test takers. If this is not done, they will not understand the test and will therefore fail the test. Next is to avoid double barreled items that convey two or more ideas at the same time. Double barreled items may end up confusing the test taker since they may fail to decide whether to agree with or disagree with the statement. This will eventually affect the results of the test. Next is to consider mixing positively and negatively worded items. When writing test items, you need to be sensitive to the cultural and ethnic differences. When items are used for a long period of time, they tend to lose reliability. All of the above and none of the above should not be an, should not be an answer option. All answer options should be credible. Order of answer options should be logical or vary. Items should cover important concepts and objectives. Negative wording should not be used. Answer options should include only one correct answer. Specific determiners should not be used. Answer options should be homogeneous. Correct answer option should not be the longest answer option. Items should be independent of each other. Test copies should be clear, readable and not handwritten. Let us now take a look at some of the item formats. Dichotomous format offers two alternatives for each item. 
If a test taker selects one of the alternatives that is presented, they are awarded a point. A common dichotomous test is the true-false examination or an S or no. The next is the polychotomous format. Here, more than two options are provided and the test taker has to choose one option. The next is the Likert format, which is very popular with personality and attitude scales. This scale is non-comparative and measures only a single trait. It is sometimes 4 point or a 6 point scale. It might range from strongly disagree to strongly agree. The next is the category format which is similar to Likert scale but uses an even greater number of choices than the Likert scale. This scale might be used to mark ratings such as mark a value between 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 or more. Next are the checklists and they are used in personality measurement. The test taker is given a list of adjectives and asked to indicate whether each is characteristics of him or her or someone else. The last are the lists where a test taker is given a list of statements about their personal characteristics and are asked to sort them. The next aspect of test construction is the item analysis. Item analysis is a statistical method used to determine the quality of a test by looking at each individual item or question and determining if they are fair. It helps to identify individual items or questions and decided whether they should be kept, discarded or revised. An item analysis is a post hoc test which means it is a measure used after the test has been taken. For example, a teacher runs an item analysis after her students complete the exam and notice that all of the students have missed question number 6. The teacher looks at the exam paper and realize a question from the next section accidentally got into the exam and the students have not attempted this as they have not thought about it. The question is then discarded and the teacher does not penalize the students for this question. I hope you like this video. Do subscribe and thank you for watching.